Hello everyone. As promised, I am back with another reading slash book excerpt. In between live streams, I plan to do these. Uh, you know, these may not be as much fun as the live streams, but I think that they are uh, informative nonetheless. And I think it falls in line with me being a, a writer and a blogger and a an author. So, and I think this, these excerpts also give uh, food for thought for future streams. And, you know, sometimes when you create something, it leads to the creation of something else. So this is going to be another excerpt from Mother Eva Doyle's uh, Eye on History. So as I described, I think in my community tab or in a short, I'm going to keep running with the black history throughout the year because I think it's something that should go beyond February, the shortest month of the year. So before I jump in, I know that, well, I think that the majority of my subscribership on this channel is black, but I want to ask my non-black subscribers to bear with me and uh, don't just discard this because it's black history related. And I think that there are aspects of this passage that I'm going to read that are universal and extend out beyond black history. This gets back to, as I said in earlier content this year, this gets back to my Gladwellian roots. Gladwellian meaning Malcolm Gladwell. And he uh, has, as a, a author, uh, a writer, and now a podcaster, his... Um, his great works are not uh, just in the realm of storytelling, but also looking at history and looking at phenomenon and looking at how and why things are the way they are and why and how aspects of history uh, have unfolded the way that they have. So he explains things. So this passage, in my opinion, as I read it, think about how societies and empires change and think about how great societies and empires eventually fall. Think about how great things come to an end and think about how things change from what they used to be, especially when those things, whether it's an empire, a country, and a state. Think about what happens when those things change hands and why they change and evolve when they change hands. And all and also think about and also think about are those changes for the better or are they for the worse? Okay, this chapter is entitled uh Molly and the King. I hope Mother Doyle doesn't mind me uh, reading these passages from her book. You can find this book online. Uh, the passages are really, really short, and I knocked out quite a few of them uh, this past weekend on my uh, train ride to and from New England. I'm leaving the link to Mother Doyle's book, Eye on History in the description box below in case you want to purchase a copy for yourself. So Mali and the King. The Black King of Mali was a powerful and influential man. His empire was large. It was unique and glittered with the gold of the land. The King was dynamic, forceful, and wise. The empire of Mali was located in Western Africa. The word Mali came from the language of the Mandingo people, meaning where the king lives. The Mandingo people, also known as the Malinke, was a group of black people who lived in Western Africa. 
the Black Empire of Mali flourished in West Africa, AD 1200 to 1500. It controlled most of what is now Gambia, Guinea, Senegal, and parts of Mauritania, Niger, and Upper Volta in Africa. Mansa Musa ruled this area. Mansa was a title given to him meaning emperor or ruler. He was also referred to as the Sultan. The Egyptians called him King of Tekrur. Tekrur was only one of the countries in his great empire. Maps of Africa during and after the rule of Mansa Musa show drawings of this black emperor surrounded with gold. Mali was the El Dorado of the African continent. Maps in many of the European documents of this period and years after recorded the empire of Mali and showed the black king as the ruler of the golden lands of Africa. Because of its vast amounts of gold during this time of Mansa Musa's rule, Mali was richer than Egypt and represented a much larger area. It took a great deal of skill and leadership of a wise man to rule the empire of Mali. How far did the thinking of Mansa Musa extend beyond the borders of Mali? In his book, Africans and Their History, Joseph E. Harris suggests that it quite possibly extended across the Atlantic Ocean. Mansa Musa acknowledged that his brother, Abubakar, had several hundred ships and gave his captains instructions not to return until they had discovered land. Only one vessel returned, the others were lost at sea. Whether the trip actually occurred or not is subject to historical debate. The outstanding fact to consider here is that the black men of Mali during the 14th century contemplated a trip across the Atlantic Ocean. What happened to the empire of Mali? Mansa Musa died in 1337 after 25 years of ruling Mali. His throne was taken over by his son, Maghan. Maghan did not have his father's skill and leadership abilities to rule such a large empire. Warriors began to raid the city of Timbuktu. Timbuktu was a very important trading and cultural center of the Mali Empire. Maghan was not capable of controlling the attacks against Timbuktu, and the other kingdoms around it wanted their independence. Maghan ruled for only four years after the death of his father. His uncle, Mansa Suleiman, became emperor after him. He was able to reestablish some control over the empire, but he too was faced with revolts within the empire. He was not able to subdue these revolts. He died in 1359, and the emperors who followed were too weak to control the many invasions that came from the raiding tribes of the desert. It must be remembered that Mali did not fall overnight. It declined slowly. An empire can only be as strong as the people who support it. The enemies would not challenge the strength of the king called Musa. So they waited and found the weakness of those who came after him. And so in time, Mali fell and became another memory of the African past. The dreams of the king were gone. He left behind another golden stone in the historical crown of the black man. We ask ourselves, where are the other golden stones that belong to our history? Can we find them and make them shine again? The motivation to know and understand can only come from within us. Mali and King Musa should be part of our memory forever. 
So there are a couple of things there. I, before reading this passage, I had heard the name Mansa Musa. I did not know uh, his entire history. And I think this gets back to the question of who should teach black history. I am of the opinion that like the other ethnic groups and cultures, we should be responsible for our own history and passing it on to the younger generations. We can't leave that to the school system. The other thing is that I think this is a proxy for empires and nations and cultures in general. From what I read here and my understanding of this, the way I'm interpreting this, there was something about Mansa Musa's rule that held everything together. And once he was gone, the entire thing basically started to atrophy and fall apart. The, uh, the raiders and uh, their enemies on the outside, once he died, they realized that and they realized they can make their move on the empire. And his son did not have the same skills and attributes that he did. And maybe he didn't have the same passion about the empire that his father did. And um, once certain attributes and certain values are gone and lost, I think a lot of times we see institutions, nations, and empires eventually fall away, break apart, and uh, pass into memory. So I think this chapter is a proxy. I don't know if Mother Doyle meant it that way, but I think this is a, this is a proxy and a representative of other things. The other powerful piece about this reading is that uh, according to what Mother Eva Doyle researched here, uh, Mansa Musa had uh, an armada of ships uh, set out to sea and set out on the ocean to look for other lands. And one of the great mysteries of uh, our planet Earth is how pyramids uh, ended up on other continents besides Africa and how African artifacts or artifacts that seem to have descended from African culture, how those ended up on other continents and in, and in other civilizations. Well, if this is true, that he sent ships out to sea to explore the world, that may help explain how and why that happened. Well, let me know what you think in the comments section below. This is Big Discussions 76, my original channel. Here I, uh, I now want to promote scholarship and reading and information and current events and knowledge for knowledge's sake. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. Um, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to donate something to the channel, that information is below in the description box. And you can also leave a super thanks. And finally, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. In addition to being a YouTube content creator, I am also a writer and a blogger and a soon to be author. All right, everyone, with that, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, look out for more content. And uh, when, whenever the next stream takes place, I will leave lots of notice. Thank you to everyone for your support. As always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Always try to do your best and take care. And I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.